Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In this video, um, I'm going to basically try to conclude my discussions on how heat stress affects the human body and uh, also bring in the idea of, you know, how, how does it affect mammals and birds and cold-blooded animals versus warm-blooded animals, etc. So, I'm talking about this paper. This is a key paper that I highly recommend that you just um, Google and find on the web and have a look at it because it, that idea that 35 degrees Celsius and 100% humidity is the survivability limit uh, for humans. You could be outside for six hours in the shade and uh, you, you uh, basically uh, overheat and uh, die. So basically the idea is, okay, there were during previous very, very warm periods on Earth, there was a lot of stress on mammals and things, but uh, their core body temperatures are higher than that of humans, so they were still able to dissipate heat and survive better than, than uh, humans would um, had we been around um, in some of these time periods. So, you know, we're, how do we adapt? Well, we would have to have air conditioning under these conditions, but the power requirements for air conditioning would soar it would surely remain unaffordable for billions in the third world and for protection of livestock. It would not help the biosphere protect outside workers. It would imprison people in their homes. Power failures would be life-threatening. Okay, it seems improbable that such protections would be satisfying, affordable, and effective for most of humanity. Same with living underground in, in, in caves, for example. Okay, so with seven degrees Celsius, now again, you know, don't focus on the seven. Maybe it's really five or four or three, you know, this number. But, you know, what will happen is there'll be small zones where, where you can't be outside, where metabolic heat dissipation would become impossible. Warming of 11 to 12 would expand those zones to include most of humans' population. Okay, this limit applies to a person out of the sun in gale force winds, doused with water at the air temperature, wearing no clothing and not working. Okay, We're, our body's trying to get rid of 100 watts. There's simply no way to do it um, because heat moves from hot areas to cold areas. And when the environment is the same temperature as your body, there's no way that heat can be dissipated from your body. It's as simple as that. It's basically a physical limit. Um, even a warming of three to four would have the margin of safety, which is the difference between the wet bulb temperature and 35. And that 35, there's some question as to how accurate it is. It's for a perfectly healthy person. What about for younger people, very old people, people on medication? people with underlying health issues. Maybe that number that they can survive is only 32 or 33 or 31. Okay, um, okay so, this, uh, so this, is a, this is not accounted for. When people talk about um, you know, the percentage of world GDP that would be affected by you know, a certain rise in temperature, they basically certainly don't consider that you know, okay, we're going to have a lot of sea level rise, that'll reduce habitable land, but what about wet bulb temperature? Uh, what about this heat stress temperature? That could even have the amount of habitable land, okay, uh, in the future with some of these temperature rises. Okay, so this is a huge problem. Now, we think uh, we're very human-centric, very people-centric. What about the animals? Okay, how do they deal with the heat stress with these temperatures? Well, the key thing is the core body temperature. Now, this is a list of normal rectal temperature ranges, which gives you a good measurement of core body temperature for a few animals treated by vet vets. Okay, so there is a range, but look at this. This is, sort this is sorted by the highest temperature here. Um, so chickens, look at that, 105 to... 
their, their uh, body temperature, core body temperature, 105 to 109.4 degrees Fahrenheit versus our 98.6. Chickens have no problem, right? Uh, the, their, the wet bulb temperature they can withstand would have to be much, much higher than, uh, you know, that 35 that hu humans, uh, humans are on the low end. And then you can follow through the different types of animals. When you get to the large, like the horse is getting closer to the, the human numbers. Okay, but it's still, it's still higher. Okay, this is actually, uh, so here, this is in um, Celsius and Fahrenheit. So here's humans, okay? 37 Celsius, core body temperature, 98.6 Fahrenheit, skin temperature, a couple degrees lower, 35 Celsius or 95. Wet bulb temperature reaches that, you last six hours. So, so, so these guys would all be, so elephants are, are, are worse off than we are. Okay, look at elephants. Okay, these type of heat, they can't, they can't deal with this heat. And then as you go down here, the numbers increase here. So here we go, uh, you know, even your cat is gonna do better than you. Okay, so our body temperature, our core body is 98.6, cats is on average 102.2 or 39. Okay, so cats aren't gonna suffer like, like humans. I mean, they're gonna withstand things better. Dogs, cows, rabbits, etc. Uh, look at goats here. Very, very, you know, this is great. You know, 103.4 core body temperature. They're going to do just fine because when it reaches that 35 degree and 100% humidity, um, you know, it, it's uh, still got, it's, it's body temperature, core body temperature is almost five degrees warmer. So heat goes from warm areas to cold areas. The goats can still shed loads of heat under those conditions where humans are SOL. Okay, so, so basically various types of mammals, you know, we're up here, we're, we're on the, the bad end, okay? We're, us and uh, elephants are about the only thing worse, according to this, you know, and we're, uh, so we're, we're there. So other animals should fare a lot better in terms of they won't be overheating like we will. Um, you know, chickens isn't on here, but chickens is up here, so... I told you before, you know, chickens are going to take over the planet, right? So this is another indication as to why. Okay, um, this is an important factor, okay? Um, the heat from an animal is dissipated. The larger the surface area, the more... That's the surface area between the animal and the environment, okay? The larger the surface area, the more heat can be dissipated. The larger the volume or the mass of the animal, the more heat there is that needs to be dissipated. So the surface area to volume ratio, okay? If we've got two centimeter, if we've got a cube here, two centimeter by two centimeter by two centimeter, the volume is two times two times two is eight. The area is four and there's six sides. So the area is 24 square centimeter. The volume is eight. So the surface area to volume ratio is three for this cube. Okay, if you double each dimension, it halves. If you, uh, if you uh, triple it from here to here, it goes down. Okay, and here, so the larger and larger the animal is, the, lar the, 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 the lar smaller the surface area to volume ratio, the more and more difficult it is to, to dissipate the heat. So when during very, very hot periods in Earth's history, as I mentioned previously, the um, animals are basically smaller. Mammals are much, much smaller as a survival mechanism, okay? Similarly, as you ch if you have the same species, that species if it's living in a warmer area closer to the equator, the body size is gonna be smaller so it can dissipate that heat. If it's up further and further, higher and higher latitudes, the body size will be, will be larger for the same species. Okay, so as we change those conditions on the earth, basically animals and plants, etc., they're not adapted to what's happening. They have to evolve and change, and how do they do that if things are changing so fast? 
Okay, a couple th other things. Um, first of all, I want to mention, you know, the heat island effect. You know, a lot of people live in cities. Okay, a big city is going to be a couple degrees Celsius warmer than the surrounding area. So if this is uh, here, a big city here, this is the night temperature, this is the day temperature, everything's going to be hotter over the city by a couple degrees. It depends on how, on, on how big the city is. So for example, this is the population density, the number of persons per square kilometer, um, U.S. cities, global, non-U.S. cities, so the average, so basically a couple, this is uh, the heat island effect in degrees, so a couple of degrees warmer, the bigger the city is, the, the warmer it is, and in the core, and there's not something we can do something about. We can change the albedo or reflectivity of surfaces in the city, less asphalt, more and more white things, white roofs, etc., to cut this effect. But this is crucial. If we're talking, you know, a couple of degrees can be the difference between most people in the city coping and thousands and thousands of people dying from, from this, you know, this, this heat stress that we've been talking about. So animals, they have some interesting adaptations. The, the biggest thing is the core body temperature. Um, like the camel, for example. They live in the hottest and driest places on earth, the desert. Okay, their legs don't get burned when they kneel on hot sand. This is called chilling out, warming up, how animals survive temperature extremes. Great, great, uh, great uh, report on how animals are affected by the high temperatures and humidity. So they have leathery patches on their knees so they can kneel down on hot sand, camels. They, they don't need water. They can survive for an entire week without water. But when they do drink, they can drink 32 gallons at once. Their body temperature ranges from 93 to 107. They don't sweat. They can serve water. They have spongy bones in their noses that absorb excess moisture. So when they breathe out, the water, the air they breathe out is very, very dry. They don't breathe out water. They don't lose the water. So adaptation is very important. This is, uh, this is, if this is the ambient temperature and this is the body temperature, of course, the cold-blooded animals, they track up linearly, okay? They can't regulate their body temperature. This is, uh, for example, a bobcat, warm-blooded, they regulate their temperature within a tight limit. And if you go beyond or below hyperthermia, hypothermia, uh, you get into deep trouble. Okay, uh, the, the shape of the animal is important. Okay, uh, if you've got a small animal like a rat or something, it'll be, it'll be somewhat spherical because that will maximize the, uh, you know, it, it, it's regulating its body temperature. Um, it's not, it's, um, okay, it, the shape of the animal can, you know, I gave the example of surface area to volume for a cube, but of course animals aren't shaped like cubes. They're in different shapes. Um, for example, okay, so the fish that are cold-blooded, they're basically flat and long, and they can have a large surface area so that their body temperature can change to that of the external environment fairly quickly. Uh, it takes a lot of energy to uh, regulate body temperature. So warm-blooded animals, they have to get that energy from food, they have to eat more, etc. In order to do that, cold-blooded animals, they can, they can, um, you know, they, they uh, basically, their activity depends on the temperature. If it's really cold, they're really sluggish, they don't move much, and as it gets warmer, they start getting animated and getting alive because chemical reactions depend on the temperature. The higher temperature, faster the chemical reactions. Some mammals, of course, uh, hibernate. They go into this uh, state where their body temperature drops, breathing and heart rate slows. They're basically dormant. They're in this quasi-suspended animation. And uh, so on. There's lots of stuff here. Okay, there's lots of stuff about mammal adaptation, birds, etc. The key thing is uh, core body temperature. You know, our core body temperature is 35 so is, is, is uh, our skin temperature is 35, our core body temperature is 37. Therefore, uh, what we, how we survive in an environment depends on, on that. That's a key factor. Okay, thanks for listening.